Hello, bosses. Welcome to our new feature, Bo Spotlight, where we have interesting conversations with Black African women that we we spotlight at different um, occasions for different reasons. And today we're so excited to share um, this gem of a lady that we came across uh, a couple of months ago, uh, but we'll get into that uh, soon. My name is Sonia. I am the founder of the Black African Woman, and you are watching the Black African Woman Network. Thank you for joining us. I am not here by myself, obviously. I will introduce you quickly to my team. So we have Larissa in the yellow um, with the gorgeous twist. Uh, <laughs> twist. Uh, she is our content uh, manager. Say hey, Larry. Hey, guys. <laughs> then we also have the lovely Rumbi Zai, also my sister, if you didn't know. Uh, with the funky hairstyle there and she <laughs> she's our social media manager uh, hey Rumbi hey good people <laughs> all right and then last but definitely not least we have Obi Aligwekwe I don't know if I'm saying it right Obi you're right on point <laughs> okay awesome yes <laughs> so um <laughs> The beautiful Obi. So she is originally from Nigeria and she is an author. So today's spotlight highlights a black African woman. And the interesting fact about Obi, what we found so interesting is not only is she a talented writer, but she's actually a chartered accountant, guys, <laughs> who has gone into writing and she's also an inspirational speaker. Um, she is married. She's got two, two children. I believe one just graduated from the University of Toronto um, just recently. But um, Obi has written, I think it's three books now, and we'll get into that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And um, what the book that we're actually spotlighting today is called The Place Beyond Her Dreams. And this was such a good book. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think I went through it in the space of a week. And for me, that's really fast considering my timetable. I've got a lot on my plate, but I could not put this on. I had to read it every day. Um, so I can definitely say it's a very good read and we're going to get into it just now. But I wanted to let you guys know we've got three copies in uh, South Africa. Obi has been so generous. She's giving away three copies of the side and three copies in Canada. Um, or that, that side of the world. So to enter uh, and win this book, please see details about the competition below um, or visit our social media pages at The Black African Woman and stand a chance to win yourself a copy of this gym. Cool. Mm. <laughs> All right, ladies. So let's get into it. I've really been looking forward to... Um, to this uh, conversation. Obi, I think, you know, let's just give some insight into who you are. You know, I think we'd love our, our tribe to get to know the woman behind this phenomenal fictional book. Um, can you tell us a bit about who Obi is? Yeah, thank you so much, Sonia. Thank you, Larissa, and thank you, Rumbi. I'm so grateful to you guys for, you know, giving me this opportunity. I'm proud of you three for what you do spotlighting black African women and you don't just say it you do it right so uh kudos to you and um you've already given an intro about me you said everything there is to say like on the surface so yeah I grew up in Nigeria <laughs> and I moved to Canada about 20 years ago and um to do my master's degree and I've stayed here ever since you know I got married had children yeah, and outside of, outside of writing, I'm also a professional accountant with so many years under my belt. So that's basically, uh, you know, the nutshell of the way I'm in a nutshell, yeah. Yeah, and, and what, what do you enjoy? Like, what are some of your hobbies? What are some of the pet peeves that you have, things that you don't really like, for instance? Oh, my, my main hobby is traveling, going around the world and bringing pieces of travel with me. Yeah, anytime there's a, an opportunity to travel, um, I'm ready, I'm packing my bag. So this coronavirus lockdown has, you know, really put a dent on my hands. But, you know, I thank God, 
<laughs> yeah, I thank God that we're alive and we're well. So that's all that really matters. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. No, awesome. Thank you so much, Obi. Um, I guess to get us into an understanding of, of you as a writer, I'm really interested to, to know what your journey has been in terms of uh, coming to a place where you became a writer. Um, you know, how did you realize that this is something that you enjoy and when did it hit you that, listen, I'm actually a good writer because you're, you're brilliant. <laughs> Can you tell us a bit about that? Good question. Yeah, um, as far back as I can remember, I've always loved writing. So I've written to, um, you know, to escape or to even unmask the issues I may be facing or what others may be facing. And um, but then I never considered myself to be a writer in the real sense of the world, real sense being, you know, published writer and all whatnot, until one day my son who was six at the time you know came to me and he couldn't you know he kept asking me for more children's stories which was, I was writing a lot at the time to entertain them to my children mm -hmm. uh, he kept saying mommy I, I I want to read more of your writing and I always bought them books from Scholastic and everywhere from school any opportunity I got them story books right anything he pointed at, at the shop or bookstore I always bought for them so I couldn't understand why he was bothering me so much to write faster than I was able to so one day I sat him down and I was like why do you want to read my book so much? I know you haven't read this, this and that, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, mommy, because you're a good writer. That was, he was six years old at the time. Now he's turning 18 in August. Wow. And um, so that hit me. That was the moment I knew, you know, that I had something. But then, of course, I was busy being an accountant, right? I didn't actually start writing or publishing anything until three years after. Yeah, so that was the moment. It was key. And in three years later, after I wrote one chapter of my debut novel, Mfudu, my daughter, I dropped it because I didn't think I was going anywhere with it, right? I was trying to write the story I wanted to read. Yeah. Um, my daughter stumbled upon that too and said, um, why didn't you finish this? I said, why? Why should I? And she said, I don't think it's any good. She said, it's really good. And for somebody like her that's never given anything more than an a seven out of ten that was, it, was a, it was a big deal when i asked her on a scale of 10 what is it and she said eight wow. so that was the other thing that now pushed me even more to you know consider publishing sure we are grateful for your kids because they now, have the foresight the vision yeah. Yeah. yeah, I thought of my muses. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. That's really cool because I mean, you know, often it's it's the other way around. It's kids waiting for their uh, parents to validate their dreams and tell them you're really great at this and that. But it's so nice when your own children can see this gift in you and can call it out of you. Um, you know, that's a blessing. That's a gift. So really glad that you you. Yeah. <laughs> um okay awesome so please do share with us because i mean you've met you've already you've sort of touched on it now um the place beyond her dreams uh, was not your first uh book can you tell us about your other books because i think you've written two other books if i'm not mistaken can you just share with us a bit more about them yeah i've published two but i've written several that i yet to you know see the light of day. I've written a nonfiction series, I've written, uh, you know, other adult books. This okay. Beyond Her Dreams, my debut young adult novel. And, um, but as far as publishing goes, I've published three in total. My debut novel, Mfudu, uh, is um, set in 1960s Paris, London, Lagos and rural Nigeria. It's um, set against the backdrop of the Nigerian Civil War. It has several mm -hmm. interesting themes, fashion, business, war, taboos, and um, uh, taboos. And it's, um, yeah, it's an epic romance, right? And it's like I told you earlier, it's the book I wanted to read. It's still mm -hmm. my favorite book so far. My second novel that I published, Hazel House, is a mystery with romantic suspense elements. Oh. Yeah, so, um, and then the place beyond her dreams now. So I, I still have a lot more that I need to publish, but other than that, <laughs> <laughs> wow. these are the ones I do most there. Sure. 
Yes. Nice. Oh well, it, it's so interesting because uh, you know, as I, as I was reading the book, I, I I thought to myself like, wow, or we like, what is it um, that inspired you penning uh, the place beyond your dreams? Because as you've just described with your previous two books, uh, I think the only common theme I heard was obviously the Nigerian elements. That's your identity, uh, the romantic element. You know, that's definitely the three books that I published. But um, like, what is the main inspiration between behind the uh, penning the place beyond her dreams? Um. Yeah, to add to the, what you just said before I answer your question, other than the Nigeria and the romance, there's also strong female protagonist, protagonist mm-hmm. that go through a lot and, you know, mm-hmm. eventually triumph in the end, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, so the inspiration behind the place beyond her dreams was actually a dream I had in 2018. Wow. In that dream, I... Um, you know, I was I was in a place I don't I don't I don't even know what it was exactly. You know how dreams occur, and then I was taken somewhere by my father who had passed, mm-hmm. and it seemed like he was showing me something. And in that something, you know how dreams are. It's never clear, but when you wake up, you interpret. Yeah. In my yeah. own interpretation, I was seeing the state of my mind, which was very bad at that time which could have been the state of so many young women or even old women alike, right? And in interpretation, in my waking state, uh, it was the case of um, the state of young women's minds, Mm. especially in the kind of world we live today. There's so much going on. There's so much more that people have to deal with, you know, before, you know, when I was young or before I was even born, right? So after that dream, I felt this strong urge to write something that will show the transformation that is needed to pursue your purpose, Mm -hmm. to discover and eventually occupy one's purpose. Because all these problems that I talk about, all these things that are probably occurring in our world, abuse, abandonment, you know, do not let many get to where they need to be. And that's such a shame. That's a disappointment Mm -hmm. to us and even to God. Mm-hmm. So that's what happened. That's the main inspiration for that story. Wow. It's it. I actually <laughs> can see it. Now. My dream and my state like of it. mind. Yeah. yeah. Now that you say yeah. it, I can actually see it in the book. Like It's woven in 100%. Yeah. So yeah. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> it, 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 it really is. And I mean, when you just... Was, when you just when you were sharing about um that it came from a dream you know because there are all these themes of magic and wonder and going to all these other realms you know uh which is something you don't really see written a lot Mm -hmm. and especially as you mentioned before it's been very important for you to have uh african female protagonists in all of your stories but there are a couple of themes and i think the most outstanding uh, at least for us you know as we were talking about this book was just this other realm is like this wonderland this magic you know and having a young african girl like as you'd experienced going to this other realm as she is experiencing the grief of grief of her grandfather you know um can you talk us through you know sort of weaving that aspect of the story together yeah so yeah it's interesting luena that was the most difficult luena is the magical realm right i'm sorry i've been calling it luna but (laughs) <laughs> it's a made up name so I don't even know the pronunciation like, <laughs> the readers should tell me what to call it really <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm, I'm pronouncing it as it's um, spelled but I'm sure it could be any other way yeah so that part was the harder part for me to write but this is my first fantasy first mm-hmm. one I have mm-hmm. so it basically came from in a combination of maybe what I felt a fantasy world, my fantasy world should look like. Mm. At least no border wars, you know, and stuff like that. So in terms of African girl being uh, the main protagonist, it didn't even occur to me to use any other race or any other mm. tribe or anything. Why? Because representation matters. And this African yeah. girl has been the least represented most misunderstood 
in our mm -hmm. world today. I'm happy mm -hmm. things are changing. There's Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. there's advocacy, there are allies coming up everywhere. Thank God. But then there's more needs, to, still more needs to be done for the mm -hmm. African girl to get the recognition she needs. And Can in I terms of sorry, go on. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but I just really need to chime in there. And I said, you, and you represented her so beautifully. Ona, the character's name, is also complex as an African woman, which we do not see portrayed at all. It's like there's only one storyline about what uh, a Black African woman should look like. And you so beautifully shaped her character and the characters of other Black African women in her lives. So uh, just to say you did an incredible job and what you were able to do with the words you wrote in this book is what we stand for as uh, as a platform as as the black african woman in us in, in itself so it's just it was mm. so beautiful to to see and read in, in this story. yeah and, and also just to add sorry Obi, um yes. i was just saying you because we because <laughs> you know i was just thinking like you introduced us to her as as a girl as a young girl playful and loved by her grandparents and her yes. parents and you know all of these stories and you know just this is a young girl, you know, as we know, unfortunately, in the world today, especially the black female body, it's, it's sexualized so early, you don't really get to see, oh, she's, she's a kid, you know, she's a kid, and she's having fun, and she's going through this experience, and she's growing, and all of that, so, you know, you really beautifully, I think, uh, demonstrated just that journey into, uh, into her growth, you know, but yeah. Thank you, Laris. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, it was very important. And when, when it comes to Africa itself, Africa is also underrepresented. And mind you, Africa, many people don't know Africa is a continent. They say Africa. Where in Africa? South Africa, Nigeria, Sierra Leone. Hello. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, by time, the our identity has been um, so much... Um, I put under the radar that we have to tell our own stories and that's what I'm here to tell, right? I've lived in North America for so long that I cannot also represent other cultures, but I choose to write about Africa. And then in the African setting too, we have so many myths and legends that haven't been explored. So why not also um, explore them through fantasy? Mm -hmm. We have thousands and, you know, if it only say 10% would have been represented in books about Africa in fantastical yeah. settings. And I think that should change. But despite that, though, whether we're African, Asian, Caucasian, we all have the same problem. Despite how mm. we look on the surface, we're all yeah. the same inside. Mm. Like the main character, Honor, we go through the same struggles. We get abused, we get mm. abandoned. Mm. We go through trouble, we fall in love, we fall out. Mm. And solutions are all the same. Mm. So that's what the book represents. Every girl or boy or woman, doesn't matter the color of your skin. That's the beauty of yeah. the story. Mm. Love that. Yeah. Um, and and then you also you also delve into the issue of death, and uh, again we're talking about going to into another realm, you know. And we know in our different African cultures, it, it, never mind your belief system, uh, we definitely have always had a conception of what the afterlife looks like, and what happens to someone once they you know once they pass away. So why why did you want to explore that um, in this in this book? Um, so first of all, dreams, I had to choose the, the realm and I chose mm. dream, right? Mm. Because it works with the story. Uh, but other than that, and particularly because um, modern day solutions are usually presented by those who can dream mm -hmm. and then bring those visions and realities to life. To life, yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, but then uh, in all that story, though it's fictional, right? And um, it's fantasy. I personally mm -hmm. don't have any experience with, um, with you know, psychism or, mm. or the afterlife, except for presenting this in a, 
in a fictional story. And uh, so, and then in this case, uh, Luena, which is the magical word, is actually an allegory for self-discovery. Yes. Mm. At the core of this story. And then Honor's grandfather, who she meets in her, in her trance, mm. you know, when she enters Luena, is actually the conduit mm. for achieving this self-discovery. So as mm. far as that goes, that's as much as I know <laughs> in mm. writing in the fictional setting. Yeah. But I believe we are all spirits. So and then mm. that even when we die, right? The relationships we have on earth that were part meaningful to us are retained after death. Mm. That part I believe, but yeah. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. And you know, obviously the 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 book introduces us to her relationship with her grandfather you know her grandparents are taking care of her um, and you touch on the topic of intergenerational parenting so if you could maybe help us understand um, what led you to writing about that because it's a very real part of I think our uh, societies I know in, in the context of Zimbabwean uh, culture it's very real South African culture it's the same um, what led you to in to weave the story in this way? And could you tell us a bit about that grandparent parent uh, child relationship? Because her parents are alive in the book, but you chose, you know, to, mm -hmm. to, to go that direction. Yeah, I know her parents are somehow relegated to the background because yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're meant to feature, but that's just you know. Mm. to tell the story yeah i think grandparents are wonderful mm. you know as far as i'm concerned they're also the parents of the child it doesn't matter they didn't actually bear the child right mm -hmm. uh the only difference between parents and grandparents in my opinion is the fact that grandparents are more lenient with their grandchildren than a parents can be which makes us love them even more right yes mm -hmm. yeah. for sure so, <laughs> the main character Honor in the story loved her grandfather so much. They were so close that when he died, you know, it devastated her, right? And uh, for some reason, she had to meet him in the, you know, in the other world, Luena. And um, yeah, and so she was able to discover herself. He was also able to help guide her towards um, understanding her purpose. This is something that grandparents will normally do, you know, in life, you know, yes. just by watching them and their examples. So it's important that we on earth, you know, be the best we can be so that we can become that kind of grandparent in the future. And I, a lot of people don't, one thing a lot of people don't know about me is that I also grew up with my grandparents. I lived with my grandparents for the first three years of my life, mm -hmm. right? Because my mother had to go to university. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so I, yeah, it's, um, my sisters always tease me that I behave like my, grandmother they call me grandmother <laughs> not for the reason not for the reasons you might think wise <laughs> no for the wrong reasons yes. they think I'm, um i have a weaker sense of humor and they think um they think i heard you know mm. preserving yes, yes, yes. <laughs> i call it preserving things like they, they call know, it hoarding <laughs> yeah they think yeah <laughs> that's beautiful and it, and it was, it's so beautiful how in the story you show a love between a grandfather and a granddaughter which we don't see very yeah. especially when it comes to male female relationships from uh what's uh what's the father oh that's father son anyway but from that kind of seeing that relationship in a pure truly innocent and beautiful way you crafted it so beautifully in your storytelling which was a love story in its own way that you yeah. wove with Ona and her grandfather so beautifully told. Um, and then you also obviously talk about romantic love in the story and you portray it from two angles, which is really powerfully done. Uh, can you highlight for us like the message you're trying to convey with the love story we see without giving too much away, obviously to the readers, but that you're trying to convey I found it very powerful, it's very necessary, very real, but what were you trying to convey with the love story we see and the angles in which you approached uh, the love story here? Yeah. Hmm. yeah, so, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Rumi. Yeah, so the love story, if you 
noticed with all the other different things in the book was not the main gist yes yeah but somehow you know has its own story yes. so what i was trying to do there was um you know use honors love relationship with okay i'll try not to give up it way much too, too <laughs> the relationship the, the relationship between the okay our bad and honor to kind of show honor's growth Mm-hmm. right so just as as luena was the catalyst that prompted honor to change the relationship between her and the two men was actually the reactant that forced her to discover yes. who she was mm-hmm. right so it was just to show her growth while being told in a beautiful romantic almost tear jerking yeah. way yes <laughs> right so in um in honor as you can imagine in honor's eyes what men were villains mm. at some point in time what i will reveal here is what happened in the end and who ended up not being a villain if you read it you know what i mean yes, yeah. right yeah she felt abandoned she felt abused and all what not yeah so the, and then in the end like also i would like young women and girls or even at any age 80 year old still falls in love and gets married and all that not <laughs> Yes. like to you know really look at who they're trying to spend the rest of their lives with right um in um sometimes it's okay to go for the guy who's made other times it's okay to go for the guy who has potential mm-hmm. and you might say oh we can't really see what the potential might bring you have yeah. to use your wisdom you have to you know pray to god even also to guide you because you never know which way to go but a lot of times you see the signs out there you don't have to wait too long to take a decision yeah. on what to do with the red flags or the signs you see always put god first and you know remember to ask for more sight in your mind's eye so that you can make a decision and whoever you marry will change the entire trajectory of your life it is a very important very very important step in any mm. young woman's mm. life and vice versa and for a boy too the other way around mm. that's mm. so powerful and so beautiful and i i love what you said that the the relationships were a catalyst for the change she needed to make in her life and i think in this in this book you do show that you know relationship is not the end goal per se which i think a lot of people assume for black african women your only goal in life is to be in a relationship or to be come a wife but there was so much she had so much desire for a purpose and life beyond just being somebody's wife or whatever and i just yeah. want to say thank you because i saw pieces of me in ona's character and i'm sure anyone who reads the book can identify and see themselves in some way shape or form it it doesn't matter who you are where you're from your background what you look like um and that's what was so beautiful about um about this book so before we wrap up we just wanted to ask you you know for those who are listening where could they get their hands on the book um how can they support you and uh your beautiful honestly it's a beautifully told story so it's Thank not you. just us saying it but uh obi's done something really special with this book so where can we find it and how do we get a hold of it so you can find the book on amazon brands and nobles books a million several online retailing stores i don't even know what their names and uh, just search for the name of the book if there's a chance it's somewhere near you and i'm working very hard to get the book in south africa nigeria and other african countries so bear with me um if you can get in all those other areas it's a bit near you soon mm-hmm. yeah thank you <laughs> thank you awesome yeah thank you obi thank you ladies <laughs> It's yeah. a beautiful cover. It's stunning, by the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's gorgeous. I mean, it's so intricate. Um and it does make you feel like you're entering into a different world. Yeah, yeah. And I think what I loved is because I really enjoy um your fantasy films like um uh Lord of the Rings. I mean, I'm not a I'm not a hardcore fan like some people, but <laughs> I enjoy those other worldly kind of um 
stories and it was nice to read it from an African um, perspective. Uh, definitely well written. Uh, so thank you so much, Obi. And guys, remember to enter the competition you want to get yourself this beautiful book. Um, but thank you so much, Obi, for your time. Um, thank you. Here with us. Thank you, uh, Larry and Rumbi, for for asking Obi the, the necessary questions. I feel like I feel good. Like it feels like a nice rounding off of reading this this book, being able to understand the mind of the person who wrote it. Um, yeah, a mini book club. Yeah, yes. yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Um, and we hope this is not the last time we'll see you here. We are looking forward to reading 10 more of your books. We are ready to review and share, spotlight you. Um, but guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Obi, I don't know if you have any final words for our, our viewers before we, we, we go off. Sure. Thank you for listening. And um, in line with the main theme of the book, uh, if you have any dreams or, or goals, don't be afraid to go for it. Go courageously and um, make responsible decisions, you know, as you do that. And then be thankful to those that have helped you along the way. Thank God. Thank all those people. And then, you know, give back anytime, anywhere you can, any opportunity. It's important to make this world go round. So that would be yeah. So awesome. Thank you so much, Obi. Guys, thank you for tuning in. Keep your eyes peeled to our platform, the Black African Woman Network on YouTube. We're also on Instagram, on Facebook. And Obi's also on social media platforms. She's on Instagram, she's on Facebook, she's got a website. We'll put all the details in the description box below. Um, and we'll catch you guys next time. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye girls.